Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at Walmart's all new OnSurf Tablet Pro. This is the 10.1 inch version and they also make an 8 inch version. This one retails for $129 and the 8 inch version is $99. We have a 10.1 inch screen, a 2 gigahertz octa-core CPU, 3 gigs of RAM, 32 gigabytes of internal storage, and Android 10. Just judging by the specs here and the Pro moniker, this should be much more powerful than the ones they released in 2019. Now if you remember correctly, they released a $69 10 inch tablet and I believe it was a $49 8 inch tablet in 2019 under the same brand on. But these are the pro versions, new for 2020, and I'm really interested to see how these perform. Now inside of the box you're going to receive a few coupons, like $10 off your grocery purchase, you also get 3 months of Voodoo free, but I'm interested in the tablet itself. It's definitely got some heft to it, and to my surprise it actually has a metal back. So hopefully this helps with cooling that 2 GHz CPU. On the front here it's got all your instructions you need. We also get our user manual. USB Type-C cable, and a 1 amp 5 volt charger. Now this is not going to do any quick charging with this, but you could move up to a 2 amp charger and get a little better out of it. So on the bottom here, it looks like they have their proprietary keyboard dock connector. I'm not sure if they're selling this yet, I have not seen it, and I'm not sure if the older keyboard dock works with this. On one side of the tablet, we have a 3.5mm audio jack for your headphones, a USB Type-C charger port, micro SD card slot compartment, our power button, and our volume rocker. Now that's pretty much it for buttons on the unit, but up top we do have dual stereo speakers, and I have tested these out. They actually sound pretty good for a cheap tablet. As specs go, it's looking a lot better than the 2019 non-pro versions. For the CPU, we have the MediaTek MT8768WA. This is an octa-core Cortex A53 ARM CPU. Four cores at 1.5 and four cores at 2 GHz. For the GPU, we have the PowerVR Rogue GE8320. It does OpenGL and Vulkan, so it is built into this version of Android 10 that comes preloaded on the tablet. And we also get 3 gigs of RAM, now that definitely doesn't seem like much, but with these cheaper tablets they're usually shipping with 2 gigs, so that extra gig will help out in the long run. The display is a 10.1 inch 1920x1200 LCD. Now nowhere in the manual or on the box does this say it's an IPS display, but viewing angles really aren't that bad. They're not as good as let's say the new Amazon Fire 10 tablet, but overall I think it's a pretty decent screen for a $130 tablet. 32 gigabytes of internal storage plus a micro SD card slot, good up to 128 gigabytes. Now that's all that I've tested in it, it might go higher, but 128 will be perfect for something like this. 802.11ac Wi-Fi, so you can pick up that 5 gigahertz network, and I do want to check out GeForce Now and xCloud streaming to this, because we have Bluetooth 4.2 built in, so I can connect pretty much any Bluetooth controller. And the tablet is actually running Android 10. Overall, it's a pretty clean ROM, but I do call this the Walmart launcher because at the very bottom, we always have that Walmart icon that'll bring us right to walmart.com. And there's three other apps built in that you can disable, but you can't delete. Sam's Club, Grocery, and Voodoo. So one thing I never really talk about are the cameras on these tablets because most of them are garbage and this one is exactly the same. We have a five megapixel front shooter and a five megapixel rear shooter. Both of them are really bad. The kids would love them, playing around with some games that incorporate the camera, but overall this isn't something you want to buy to take family photos with. So obviously I had to run some benchmarks on both of them. On the left hand side we have the new On tablet. On the right hand side the 2019 Amazon Fire 10 HD. This is Geekbench 4. Unfortunately I couldn't get Geekbench 5 or Antutu to run on the Amazon Fire HD, but as you can see the HD is definitely beating out the On Pro tablet by a lot in single core and multi-core performance. Now this is just strictly dedicated to CPU performance, so yes, the Amazon Fire HD 10 does have a more powerful CPU, but what about the GPU? And for that, I used 3D Mark Slingshot Extreme. Unfortunately, the Vulkan part of the test didn't run on the on tablet, but Vulkan is supported. I've tested it with PPSSPP and a few other apps. But for OpenGL, we scored a 351 on the new on Pro tablet, and the Fire HD 10 came ahead in OpenGL with 1158, so we do have a significantly more powerful GPU and CPU in the Amazon Fire HD 10 over the new On Pro tablet. And just because I'm here, I did want to test out some other benchmarks that work on the On tablet. Here we have Geekbench 5, Single Core 146, Multi 786. So we're on the lower end here with Geekbench 5. 
And finally, Antutu. Total score, 91,617. Like I mentioned, the Amazon Fire HD 10 wouldn't run this right now, but I have run it in the past. And it scored a 128,000, but the GPU score on the HD10 was around 30,000. So yeah, that HD10 is just much more powerful than this little tablet here. One of the big things that people use these tablets for is media consumption, whether it's streaming video from YouTube, Netflix, Disney+, Hulu, Amazon Prime, and this works really well for it. 1080p, 60fps video is no issue whatsoever. I'm going to go ahead and test out a video here on YouTube, 1080p, 60fps, everything loads up relatively quickly, and I really do like the speaker setup on this. Like I showed you, we have those dual stereo speakers up top, and it does get pretty loud. So YouTube works really well, let's go ahead and test out Disney+. Plus. Now keep in mind you're not going to get any 4K content on this. This is a cheap tablet with a 1080p screen, but 720 and 1080p video is totally possible and it works very well. Disney Plus loads right up. You can download this directly from the Google Play Store. I also tested Amazon Prime Video and Hulu, but here we have some Netflix just to give you a look. I'll just start a random video here. Might be a little dark with this one, but overall, it does work well. So if you want to buy something like this for the kids so they can watch their favorite shows on Netflix, YouTube, Hulu, Disney+, Plus, it'll work out just fine. So with video playback out of the way, it's time to test out some gaming. We're going to test out Minecraft, Asphalt 9, King of Fighters All-Star, Call of Duty Mobile, and PUBG. So first up, we have Minecraft Pocket Edition. I did install the beta version just so I could see the FPS up at the top here. I'm set to 8 chunks, fancy graphics is off, and we're getting an average of around 30 FPS. Definitely not the best that I've seen out of an Android tablet, but it is playable. Next up we have Asphalt 9, and to my surprise it actually performs quite well. A lot of these lower end tablets that I test have a bunch of stutters, but this one here seems pretty smooth. Here we have King of Fighters All-Star, and performance here isn't great. I mean, it's kind of playable, but I do notice some stutters here and there. And by the way, I do have the rendering resolution set to the lowest and graphic settings set to low. But I have noticed a lot of slowdowns and stutters with this game. PUBG is really well optimized. I've been able to run this on the $50 Amazon Fire tablets, and here, performance really isn't that bad. We're at the lowest settings with the lowest frame rate. I wouldn't run out and buy one of these specifically to play PUBG on, but you could get by playing this game casually on a tablet like this. And finally, for native Android gaming, Call of Duty Mobile. Again, very well optimized game. It runs on low-end tablets and low-end phones quite well. Here I'm at the lowest settings, lowest frame rate, and it is playable. Now one of the things I was really excited about testing out on this tablet was emulation. I'm using an Xbox One controller connected over Bluetooth. I'm going to save you some time right now and just let you know that higher end emulation is not great on this device. If you want to run older systems using RetroArch like NES, SNES, PC Engine, Neo Geo, Final Burn Alpha, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, and even Nintendo DS using the Drastic Emulator, it's going to work fine. All of those run at full speed. But when we move up to the harder to emulate systems like even Dreamcast using ReDream, I've run into issues even with some of the easier to emulate games like Sonic Adventure 2. We just can't maintain that 60 FPS threshold even with an easier to emulate game like this one. I do have the settings as low as they can go here and this is definitely not the worst that I've seen but I have seen better out of cheaper prepaid phones. So this is an easier one to emulate. Let's move up to a harder one like Dead or Alive 2 and see how it performs. 
I'm still set to as low as I can go here, and we're getting an average of 45 FPS out of this one. Let's take a look at some PSP emulation using PPSSPP. This is a really easy one to run. Soul Calibur, Broken Destiny. I'm at 1x resolution with all the hacks on, and if I go to 2x, it just won't run at full speed. So far, I haven't had really good luck with these higher-end emulators on this tablet. But since I'm here, I figured I'd test one of the hardest ones to emulate, and that's God of War Ghost of Sparta. And like you may have guessed already, it's pretty bad. Now, I don't have frame skip on, and you could use it here, but overall, if I buy a tablet for $130, I don't want to have to use frame skip with these emulators. And finally, because everybody asks, even if those other emulators don't run well, they want to know if Dolphin's going to run or GameCube games. And as you can see here, we're running the Dolphin emulator with Soul Calibur 2. It's pretty bad. So you will not be able to run GameCube games at full speed. And i got a lot of graphical glitches going on here. I've tested Vulkan and OpenGL. So after spending some time with this tablet, I've actually come to the conclusion that this really isn't a bad tablet for everyday use. Now, if you're into emulation or native Android gaming, then I would definitely stay away from it. But if you're looking for a tablet to watch videos on, check your email, check the news, and do some web browsing, this is going to work out just fine. But as for raw performance, this really just isn't going to get you there. The Amazon Fire 10 HD 2019 has more power than this, but it's running Amazon Fire OS, which is something I really hate. Yes, you can install Google Play on it, but it's still not stock Android. And this is running Android 10 right out of the box. Yes, we do have those four apps pre-installed from Walmart and the little Walmart icon in the bottom, but I can overlook that. But yeah, I mean, this tablet would work out for kids or grandparents. You can play Minecraft on it and Roblox, plus they got YouTube, Disney+, and Netflix ready to go. But that's it for this one. I was hoping for some better emulation performance, but that's what we get with a $130 tablet. Really appreciate you guys watching. I will leave some links in the description if you're interested in picking one of these up or just learning a little more about it. Like I said, you can't buy it online yet, but you can find one at a store near you. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. But like always... Thanks for watching.